In this video, we'll go through some worked examples of how to name branched hydrocarbons. So I'm going to start by suggesting you try to name these two molecules for yourself. Pause the video, draw out the condensed structural formula if you need to, to get a good idea of what the molecules look like, and then try to name each one. OK, so here are the condensed structural formulae. And now to name them. First, find the longest chain in the molecule. This one has seven carbons, and they're all single bonds, so we know that the uh, base of the name is going to be heptane. There's one branch, and the branch has two carbons, so the name of the branch is ethyl. Now if we number the main chain, the branch is attached right in the middle, so it doesn't actually matter which direction we number in and it turns out that the branch is on the fourth carbon. So the final name for this molecule is 4-ethylheptane. Again, remember the hyphen to separate numbers and letters. Now for this one. First, find the longest chain in the molecule. Did you spot the trick here? The longest chain is not always the one that runs straight across the page. Here is the longest chain, and it has eight carbons in it. So this molecule is based on octane. There's one substituent of one carbon, so that's a methyl. And when we number the main chain, we'll start at this end, because the branch is closer to that end, and we'll find that the branch is on the third carbon. So the final name for this molecule is 3-methyloctane. A quick word on numbering the main chain. Remember, the aim in the numbering is to get the lowest possible number in the name of the molecule. In this second molecule, if you were to start numbering from the left, the branch would be on carbon number 6. But if we start at the right-hand end, closer to the substituent, the, the methyl group is on carbon number 3. In the interests of efficiency and clear naming, we go for the lowest possible number. OK, what about these two molecules? Like the last two, they are isomers. Pause the video for a second and work out their molecular formula. And I'll draw out the condensed structural formula. They both have the molecular formula C6H12, they're alkenes. So they each have six carbons and they each have one double bond, so they're clearly both a kind of hexene. But how to indicate where the double bond is in the molecule? Again, we fall back on numbering the main chain. Number the chain starting from the end closest to the double bond. Again, we're looking to get the lowest possible number into the final name. So in the first molecule, the double bond begins on carbon number 1. And in the second molecule, it begins on carbon number 2. We then indicate this in the name by inserting a number into the name, like this. Hex1-ene and hex2-ene. The number shows that the thing that comes after it, that is the double bond indicated by the ene, starts at that numbered carbon. For simple alkenes without branches, you can also find, sometimes find these names written as 1-hexene and 2-hexene. But as our molecules get more complicated and we start having prefixes on the names, it's often clearer to put the number directly in front of the ene to indicate what it refers to. So here's just a little summary page of those last four molecules that we looked at. Both of those pairs of molecules were isomers, but by naming them we can indicate the differences in their structures. OK, so let's try this one. First, find the longest chain in the molecule. It has seven carbons, so it's heptane. Next, identify the substituents. We have an ethyl and a methyl. Number the carbon chain so that we end up with the lowest possible numbers in the name. If we start from the left, the substituents will be on carbons 3 and 6. But if we start from the right, then they're on 2 and 5, so we'll go with that. So our name will have 2-methyl and 5-ethyl and heptane in it. But there are two ways of arranging that. Should we put the ethyl first, because E comes before M in the alphabet, so alphabetically, or should the methyl come first because it's on the second carbon and the ethyl is on the fifth? 
Well, again, the rules come to our rescue. So number five tells you that when you assemble the name, you should list the substituent groups in alphabetical order. So that means that this molecule is called 5-ethyl-2-methylheptane. Now try this one. This is similar to the last, but it has an extra substituent. So the longest chain, again, it's heptane. Number the chain and name the substituents. We've got 2-methyl, 4-methyl, and 5-ethyl. So remembering we have to put the substituents in alphabetical order, we could call this 5-ethyl-2-methyl-4-methylheptane. But that's a bit clunky having two methyls separate, and we already know a way of dealing with that. Remember, if you have two or more of the same kind of group, we can use di or tri or tetra, depending on how many there are, to indicate this. So the proper name for this molecule is 5 ethyl 2,4-dimethylheptane. Notice that just because we put the di in front of the methyl doesn't change the alphabetization. Ethyl comes before the dimethyl because E for ethyl comes before M for methyl in the alphabet. So di, tri, tetra don't affect the alphabetical ordering of the substituents.